A while back I've ordered this active balancer here with 4 amp balancing current. And I made a video about the new smart active balancer. And it was good. It worked quite well. It balanced our pack in no time to 1 millivolt deviation. But then after a couple of days I found out that the balancer actually never turns off. And it imbalanced your whole battery pack. So this active balancer was actually no better than these ones here. They always work perfectly as long as they are connected and they balance your pack all the time. Then the Hangsaw store sent me another... They sent me the second generation of the Nii Smart Active Balancer. It looks actually totally the same. Slightly different hardware, different app. So this time we could actually program a sleep voltage where the balancer turns off. But... Um, well, as you have seen in the other videos about the Nii Smart Balancer, it turned out there is a 0.3 volt difference between turning on the balancer and turning it off, which cannot be adjusted through the app. It's a hardwired, hard-coded software written. We could not change it. The customer cannot change this voltage delta. And as we know, 0.3 volt can mean a lot in lithium iron phosphate batteries. And I know a lot of you guys have actually ordered this second generation smart balancer from the Hangsaw store or from other sources on AliExpress because they saw my initial video where I was really, really pleased and really positive about this balancer. But then after more testing, we found out, well, we cannot change this voltage delta and it's unusable for lithium iron phosphate batteries in this form. And I encouraged everyone who has bought one of these balancers, which has this hardwired, this fixed, this fixed voltage delta, to get back to the Hangsaw store or wherever you bought it and complain about this. Get your money back, do a return. And I did follow this up with the Hangsaw store as well and said, look, this is not good enough. This is, cannot be used. Even we select the LFP settings in the smart balancer, we cannot... We cannot actually use it for the lithium iron phosphate batteries. And they confirmed they had heaps of returns and heaps of complaints. So they changed the software again to make this voltage delta available for the customer now. And they also promised to support their customers with a $20 voucher if you buy the new version of the balancer, as well as a return with a full refund of the purchase price you have paid for the working but not so much working for us balancer so if you have purchased one and don't want to use it with a 0.3 volt difference i can only encourage you to go back to your supplier and negotiate with them how to return this item to them the hangsaw store mentioned there are different possibilities how to return these items some countries have free returns through aliexpress for some you have to pay for the return back to china but still if you pay 30 40 dollars for returning this balancer back to china and you get your full refund of 130 dollars it is still worth doing it because you get on top the 20 dollar voucher for a new balancer which now actually works. At least this is what they are claiming. So the second generation knee smart balancer failed the test as well. So just last week I have received another another balancer which is the third generation of these knee smart active balancers. Yeah, and last night I installed the balancer here at our battery and I have installed the new app as well with version 2.8 now because I was very curious to see how this one works now, if it works, if it is better than everything which we had before. So join me on yet another knee smart active balancer test here, this time the generation 3 with the software version 2.8. Can it deliver? Will it balance our battery pack perfectly now, even with lithium iron phosphate? Can we change all the settings as we need them to perfectly balance our lithium iron phosphate batteries? So join me here for this video. Welcome to the off-grid garage in sunny, hot Australia. It's good to see all your happy, smiling faces here back on the channel. 
Yeah, when I woke up this morning at about 7.30 and I looked at the Victron VRM, what the battery actually does, I could see it was already over 90% again and we charged already with 1.2 kilowatts, 1.3 kilowatts it was. And I had to turn off the solar charge controllers. I lowered the absorption voltage to only 3.35 volts per cell because I want to fully charge the battery now here on camera and see what the balancer actually does. Can it deliver this time? have they fixed the software and addressed all the complaints so first thing we want to do is set the absorption voltage back to 55.2 which is 3.45 per cell and now we should see an increase in charging current here into the battery uh, the smart charm here claims we are only 12 ampere hours away from fully charge 96 percent so we will give this a few minutes until the battery is fully charged. In the meantime, I want to have a look at the software here, the new NEE 2.8 software. We do a scan. There's our smart balancer. We connect to it. And here we go. We are connected. So here from the top, you can see the runtime is already 18 hours. The balancer is turned on. The balance current is zero amps because the battery voltage is low. We are under the turn on voltage for the battery. And let's have a look at the settings here. 16 cells, 5 millivolt deviation I want. Maximum balance current, 4 amps. And then we have the two important settings here for the new app, which is the sleep voltage. We had this before. And now we have also have the equalization voltage, which we can set. So basically the sleep voltage is when the balancer turns off and the equalization voltage is when the balancer turns back on. So they gave us now the opportunity to set both individually. In most other balancers, you can only set one voltage. If the cell voltages go over this voltage, it starts balancing. If it goes under, it stops balancing. Very easy setup. But here we now have two values to set. So we can fine tune the balancer now to our battery pack which is good, right? Then we've got the battery capacity, 280 ampere hours, the battery type, LFP, and the buzzer mode, whatever that does. Okay, so let's set the sleep voltage here to 3.45 volts and the equalization voltage to 3.46. Okay, I'm confirming both values. I could hear the beep from the BMS. Now we just have to wait until a cell will hit 3.46 volts. We are still charging the battery up now. It shouldn't take very long. Give it a few minutes and then we should be there. We can see some of the battery voltages already above 3.4. And we can see we are charging with 17 amps here at the moment. So shouldn't take long. Okay, so while we are waiting for the battery to charge up now, I want to tell you a bit about what I experienced last night when I tested the balancer for the first time. So what I did, I set the sleep voltage to 3.45 volts. This is when the balancer turns off. And set the turn on voltage, the equalization voltage, to 3.5. So 3.5 on, 3.45 off again. I just want to balance if cells are peaking over 3.45 volts, basically. And I think this is a realistic scenario I set in the balancer. Many people are driving their batteries like this. Some driving higher voltages, some lower voltages. But anyway, this is what I have experienced last night. I did a test with the um, Blue Eddy here as an external energy source and our new power supply and charged up the battery fully 100% to 3.5 volts per cell. So the balancer actually turned on. What I was experienced though was, see I did basically three tests with these settings here. So my understanding was that we need one cell over 3.5 volts, what I have set in the balancer, to turn it on. And it keeps balancing until all of the cells are under 3.45 volts. All of them, not one, all of them. And I did the test three times yesterday. So charging to 3.5 and then discharging to 3.45 again. And these are the voltages the balancer turned off. 3.457, 3.45, 3.451. So this is all fine. But the turn on voltages, it always took 
one cell to go over 3.5 to 2 to 1 to 4. So there was like a 22, 23 millivolt, well, an additional voltage necessary to trigger the balancer. It did not turn on once one cell hit 3.5 volt. I did the test three times, as you have seen, and I could always measure these 22, 23 millivolt. And I said, well, this is weird. Is this just because of these voltages or is there always, is this an inaccuracy or is this a design feature? Couldn't quite make sense out of, out of that because the turn of voltages were fairly precise at 3.45 volts, right? So then I did another test and then I lowered the turn on voltage from 3.5 to 3.46. So turning on at 3.46, turning off at 3.45, yeah? Only 10 millivolt difference between turning on and turning off. Very narrow window for the balancer to work in. And the results were like 3.45 turning off, 3.45 turning off, 3.449, only one millivolt. So again, the turn off voltage was perfectly fine, but the turn on voltage was again about 20, 22, 23 millivolt over the set voltage. Yeah, you can see we have set 3.46, but it turned on at 3.481. 8383 in the third test. And I thought, well, this inaccuracy, I called it inaccuracy, is not good. Because if you charge your battery to a higher voltage, as some of you do, 3.65 volts, and you have a 20 millivolt addition you need to reach before the balancer kicks in, you could potentially overcharge your cells every time you charge your battery. Because then you charge it to over 3.7 volts every single time before it gets discharged by the balancer. And this is certainly something you don't want. So. Of course, I have sent text messages back to the manufacturer again and said, well, this is what I have measured now. This is what I have experienced. This is my setup. These are the results. Why is there a 22 millivolt difference between what I set in the balancer and when it actually turns on? I have checked all the voltages with multiple multimeters and, well, the voltages were correct, it actually needed this 22 millivolt to turn on the balancer. So the problem or feature definitely sticks with the balancer, not with any cabling or, or measurement or something. So now the response I received will probably surprise you as well as it has surprised me. I was a bit I don't know. I don't know what my feelings were at this point of time when I read this. So here's the deal. What they did is they are not using the maximum. Let me start the screen recording again here. So they are not using the maximum voltage for triggering the balancer. This is what I just explained. Usually when one cell hits the 3.5 volts, it starts the balancing. Really? Are you serious? So no, they are not looking after the maximum voltage of one of the cells. What they are doing is looking after the average voltage of all the cells. Here, so here in the app, we can actually see the average voltage, 3.387 at the moment. So basically what they are doing is they are measuring the voltages of all the cells every four seconds, but then wait for about three minutes. And if the condition is still true, they start the balancing process. So there is a delay from reaching 3.5 volts until the balancer turns on. And she explained this like, well, because of the increased accuracy of the balancer now, it would frequently turn off and on at around the set turn on voltage, which would negatively affect the service life of the whole device. So they are measuring the voltages every four seconds but only process the result every 150 seconds. 
And this is exactly why we can see an increase in voltage, so 3.5 to 2. This is around the 22 millivolt mark. This is just the time delay the balancer needs to turn on. And of course, the battery keeps charging and increase the voltage. Oh, thank you, Brian, for your generous donation. Thank you very much. It just came through. And I... <sighs> Well, I don't know. I, th I thought about it last night a lot. I I stood here in the garage for almost two hours and did some testing back and forward again. And I couldn't quite understand why they're using an average voltage then. And I, I, got, I got back to her and said, well, this is all very confusing. And how should the customer, how should your customers actually understand how this balancer works and why it is working this way? And... <laughs> It is probably because of the language barrier as well. I don't quite understand everything she is explaining to me. And she came back with um, like, well, we have 280 amp hours capacities. If we would have larger capacities, it would be different. Or if we have lower capacities, it would be different again. Well, it shouldn't be. You know, it shouldn't be different at all. It doesn't matter how far, how large the capacity of your battery is. It should start balance at 3.5 volts if I set this in the app. You know, even the Palo cells, they should start at 3.5 volt. The only thing you need to change then is the balance current. If you have these smaller cells, you don't want to balance the Palo cells with 4 amps, for example. But I got back to her and I said, well, look, we've got other BMSs. They have only one set point, which you can adjust through the app. And then the balancer turns on if one of the cells goes over, if all of the cells go under the threshold, the balancer turns off again. They obviously don't have any problems with service life. They frequently turn off and on. And to be honest, it is not that frequently at all. You know, when the balancer kicks in, it always takes a few minutes anyway to bring down your voltage. Sometimes the balancer even stays on because you still keep charging, you know, and your charging current is still higher than the discharge current for your balancer. So there, I've never seen a balancer turning off and on, on and off all the time frequently at this point then. Even, even testing the Palo cells, it stays on for a couple of minutes anyway. So this is what I could find out last night. And... I want to do some more testing today, but including you guys with the camera today. I want to show you live what is going on here with the balancer and the new app now. So what I did last night is was turning off the balance function of the QUCC BMS because I don't want to have enter any interf interference with any other devices here at the moment. I just want to test the new active smart balancer and see if it actually balances. Man, I don't know what's going on now. Oh, it's cloudy. What the heck is going on? Well, we are expecting actually some rain the next couple of days. So I'm glad the battery is fully charged now. Um, this morning we had like 60 amps outside. It was pure sunshine. But now when I need the sun to recharge the battery, it is not there anymore. Well, we are at 90, well, we are at 98.4% already. We are charging with 10 amps. So it shouldn't be too much longer until the battery hits the 55.2, which is the 3.45. I'm confused with all these numbers now. We are still at 16 millivolt deviation now, but we are still at 3.4 volts only. So this is still the flat part of the voltage curve while charging the battery. So another couple of minutes and hopefully we are there then. So we can now see we've got the first cell over 3.46 volts. And if we quickly go back to the settings here, we can see the start voltage for the equalizer is set to 3.46. So I was expecting the balancer turns now on, but here at the top, you can see the balance current is still zero amps and the battery voltage is low and equilibrium stops. That's what the status says at the moment. Even we are over 3.46 volts. And the average voltage the app shows us is 3.45 volts. So we are still a little bit under 3.46. And let's keep it running and see when the actual balancer turns on. So we have now reached the status that our solar has turned off because we have reached the 55.2 volts I have set in the solar charge controllers. But the balancer still hasn't kicked in. 
Um, even the maximum cell voltage is 3.46 volts. So what I'm doing right now is I have the power supply set up here at 55.2 volts. And I'm slowly increasing the voltage here on the power supply, which will increase our overall pack voltage now. And also the battery cell voltage is of course. So we just go to 55.3. And we should see uh, four amps still going into the battery. Uh, we've got the fan now from the, uh, it's not too bad. So I wanna observe here the app and see when the balancer actually turns on. 3.465. The balancer has not turned on because the average voltage was not over 3.46. You can see here, average voltage is still 3.45. Going a little bit higher here, our voltage. And now we can see the average voltage is 3.458 and the deviation is 74 millivolts. What's going on? Ah, now the fan of the power supply comes on again. Can you still hear me? <laughs> That's insane. Fans. So we now have reached a average voltage of 3.461, which is over 3.46, right? So it should turn on in the next couple of seconds. Ah, it just turned on while I was talking. So it is actually watching the overall average voltage not the maximum voltage. We can see the maximum voltage of our cell is 3.47 now. So it is not too bad, but we have only 50 millivolt deviation at the moment across the whole pack. Okay, I'm turning off the charger again now. So the question is, would you start balancing at 50 millivolt deviation at 3.45 volt at all? Some people say no, because it is not a critical spread across your cells, you're still well within the specs of the cell. So there's no need for any balancing at all. I'm the opinion to start balancing early to counter actually any balancing happening in the battery at all. Because if you wait for too long, you later on down the track may have a problem that you need to balance quite a lot and your balancer cannot keep up anymore. So I'm under the impression to balance a little bit every time instead of waiting until we have a too high spread or deviation in the whole pack. But this is just how I would handle it. So now the voltage is going back to 55.2 volts. And the average voltage is now under 3.45 and the balancer has turned off. So as you can see, it is working, right? It is totally working. I turn on the power supply again, we do another cycle. What I want to do is now change the equalization turn on voltage to 3.5. Yeah, as I had it last night. I have now increased the voltage to 56 volts on the power supply, which is uh, 3.5 per cell. Um, the reason I want to see what the deviation actually is at 3.5 volts in the pack and how the balancer copes with that. And when it turns on, so 3.5 is our turn on voltage for the average battery voltage, not the maximum. See, the maximum is already over 3.5. And I was wondering why it's not turning on, but it's looking at the average voltage. To be honest, I don't quite like this because you could have a cell now going far, far, far over the 3.5 volts now, and the balancer is still not kicking in. I mean, the BMS is still there and will eventually turn off your the camera in the way actually will eventually turn off your battery but this is not the goal at all so we are now over 3.5 volts average and see the highest cell is at 3.522 this is what i measured last night as well so it's actually overshooting your target now it has turned on at 3.51. You need to take this into account. We are still not hitting any critical voltages at all. Deviation is 63 millivolt at 3.5 volt, which is totally fine, I would say. And the balancer is now doing its job.
Okay, we leave it here at 3.5 volts for a moment at 56 volts and see what the balancer actually does with the deviation. So we have now balanced for about 12 minutes and the deviation has come down from 52, 53 volt to 33. So that's quite a good result within 10, 12 minutes. I usually balance for about half an hour, so I keep the battery on 3.45 for 30 minutes to give the QUCC BMS enough time with its low balance current of only 200 milliamps to do some work on the battery. But with this one, you can easily set this down to only 15 minutes. Okay, I would say give it another 10, 15 minutes until we reach this half an hour, and then we do a result and a verdict of this balancer then. Okay, it is now 11.49, so we have balanced now for almost half an hour, 28 minutes. And the deviation is down to 8 millivolt only. 3.5 volts, they all have. See, that is fantastic. I think this is a very good result for half an hour balancing at 3.5 volts. Well, guys, okay, so far this test of the Generation 3 Knee Smart Active Balancer yeah, I just wanted to highlight all these special parameters you need to know now if you want to buy one of these balances. To summarize this, it is actually looking at the average voltage, not at the maximum voltage anymore, to turn on the balancing or turn it off again as per your settings in the app. I think it's very, very, very super amazingly important that you know that before you buy such a balancer. Otherwise, you are quickly getting into these tests here and think the balancer is not working or not accurate anymore. I will change all the text on my website for this balancer now and explain this there as well and link the videos to the balancer. So, well, the verdict is now is the balancer fixed? Is the knee smart active balancer working and fixed now? I would say yes, it is, with a little asterisk. There are certain conditions you need to know, but you know now. And secondly, would I recommend buying one of these knee smart active balances? Well, this is totally up to you. I think it's a great device. It is working now as we wanted it to work. We can set all the parameters individually. And from the tests you have just seen here, it works perfectly fine. We are now down to five millivolt deviation. And I think if we go a little bit further down, it will actually stop balancing then because this is what we have set here in the settings. Yeah, five millivolt deviation. Well, honestly, if I would have a DALI BMS, I would consider definitely buying one of these smart active balancers here with four amps to overcome the lack of balancing functionality in the DALI BMSs. If I would have a QUCC BMS, well, I actually have one. Here with my QUCC BMS, I probably would have one as well because it has only 200 milliamp of balancing current and we've got 280 ampere hour cells. If I would have a JK BMS or maybe another BMS with higher balance current or even active balancing as the JK BMS, I would not buy one of these active balancers then because the JK BMS has this all built in. So it depends a bit on your circumstances as well. And of course, these balancers here work only from 8 to 24S, I think. So with a 4S 12 volt system, you cannot use any of these balancers unless you put a booster in between um, because they need a higher operation voltage than your battery has. I have made the video before that. I'll link this down below if I don't forget. Ah, I've forgotten. The biggest advantage of this active smart balancer is it balances with four amps, actually over four amps all the time. It doesn't matter how much voltage difference you have between your cells, it always pulls and pushes four amps. None of the other balancer does that. This one doesn't do it. This one, the maximum current is four amps, but only if the voltage difference is high enough. The knee smart active balancer does it all the time. Big plus. Okay, well, at least we can now close the chapter of the knee smart active balancer. It is working now. 
And if you have made it until here, well, I've got a little surprise for you now as well. I will give away this third generation balancer here from Ni for free for one of you guys. Please leave a comment down in the description if you have bought one of the um, older generations of the Ni and you didn't get your money back and why you would need a balancer in your setup. And then I randomly choose one of these comments there and I will send this third generation balancer to you for free as a little giveaway, as a little thank you for your support here on the channel. I was supposed to make a short video about this balancer, but well, here we are. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support here on the channel, for all your donations, for all your t-shirts you have bought. This is all very much appreciated and helps out the channel a lot enables me to make more videos. Until the next video, guys, stay charged, stay safe, and thank you again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye. Don't forget to leave your comments why you want a balancer. I'll send it to you then. <laughs>